G'day, welcome back. So, last week you saw us get the solar system sorted. Now we need to get a couple of the mechanical systems sorted because we're about to do our first multi-day sea trial. And you might say, oh my god, is that too fast? Are you really pushing it? Is Brewpeg ready? And the answer to all of that is, oh my god, no it's not ready and we're going to do it anyway. Brewpeg was a sunken fishing trawler that was stripped out and ready for the scrapyard. She's just completed a 10 year rebuild that's brought her back to life. With the help of volunteers and funded by our Patreons, community and subscribers, she'll be crewed by passionate people from around the world. If you'd like to be involved and support the project, please consider joining us on Patreon or subscribe to the channel. There's a link in the description below. So there's a few priorities that we need to focus on. The first is getting grease into the prop shaft. So uh, we have been able to use the boat previously, as you've seen with sea trials and stuff like that that we've done up till now, but we haven't been able to put decent amounts of grease in. We've been able to have to go through every grease nipple and grease it up and so on, which is fine, but a pain. Um, and I thought that we had this berth for quite some time. So I ripped all of the grease system out thinking that I would upgrade it before we go to sea. Turns out we have to go to sea very fast. When I say go to sea, we have to move. So um, we've had the work berth, a berth that we're allowed to do welding and grinding and whatever out on the back deck here. Um, we are uh, about to move. There's a trawler that's coming into this berth. They need this berth for that trawler. And we're about to move to one of the normal berths. Uh, we have to do that tomorrow. So we have to push on, get this grease system working. Um, nothing's open right now. It's currently Sunday and not a shop in town is open. So I have some of the parts, not all of the parts. So what I'm going to do is build what I can today. And then as soon as the shop's open first thing in the morning, I'm going to race into town, grab a couple of fittings that we need, put them on the system, make sure the system works, and then start the engine and move the boat. Keen-eyed viewers may notice in the background a mountain of shit and parts. This has to be dealt with as well. However, I don't have time to deal with it right now. So we're going to get this grease system built and then we're going to move the boat and then deal with that. We're in flat water, so none of this is going to fall. Um, however, we need to also, over the back here on this shelf, we need to go through and sort. It's been a while since we've had a good sort out of that shelf. We need to go through and have a good sort out of that, throw out probably half the stuff we're not going to be keeping. Likewise, over the back here, half the stuff that won't be kept will be binned um, or taken to second-hand shops or given away, whatever. We have to get it off the boat, basically. And then we also need to make um, some netting and everything to hold all of our parts and gear and tools and things in. So there's quite a lot of work to do. A couple of weeks ago, you saw the vice that sits on this bench be robbed from here and stuck onto the bench up top that we put on the rear rear work deck. And we did that because we don't have the funds to replace this vice and essentially have two vices on the boat, even though we need that. Our plan was to basically unbolt the one upstairs and put it down here and vice versa, swap it around every time, which is a nightmare if anybody's ever tried to unbolt a vice. It's absolutely not a solution, but it was all we could do at the time. Within about half an hour of seeing the video that we put out saying that we're stealing the vice from down here and putting it up top, one of our Patreons, Peter Jelly, um, emailed us and said, I have a vice on the way. And then he sent the details of what the vice was and it's an absolute beast. It's bigger and um, chunkier than the one that we took from here. So we're gonna be putting Peter Jelly's vice, this massive box that is a vice, we're gonna be putting that down here. So we're gonna have a constant reminder of his generosity. Thank you so much, Peter. This is amazing, mate. This thing is just beautiful. So one of the cool things about this vise is it has this quick release at the back here. It's basically a lever that disconnects it. It's not bolted down, so I can't show you right in a second, but I can push that lever in like so and pull the vise in and out. You don't have to wind it all the way in or all the way out. It has the same functions as the other one, so we can rotate it you know, in, in different directions, and we can also undo these ones on the side here and spin it around in those orientations. But one of the cool things about these engineering vices is up here you've got the jaws that allow you to hold pipe with tape. So you've got the jaws that allow you to hold round things. So you can either go and turn it that way. You can you see that you can grab a round thing that way, or you can grab a round thing that way. So it's pretty cool. They're pretty awesome vices. So this is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much for this, Peter. This is this is just awesome. Done. That thing looks amazing in place. So with everything on Brewpeg, we try and make maintenance and using the boat as easy as possible. And one of the things that we need to do when we're using the boat is lubricate the propeller shaft and the rudder shaft. Now these are stainless steel shafts, they're quite big, they're four inch diameter shafts for the prop and that's two and a half inch, I think, from memory for the rudder. So they're fairly large diameter pieces of stainless steel and therefore expensive to replace. And one of the simplest ways to keep them alive is to have a good steady flow of grease going through those um, through the bearings and everything that those run in. Now, you can, there's a simple way of doing that. Basically, you can have a grease nipple at the various parts that you need to lubricate, and then you walk around with a grease gun and you, and you do that. And that's fine. However, 
getting access to some of these grease ports is actually pretty difficult on Brewpeg. So on Brewpeg, we've got two things on the propeller shaft we need to lubricate. At the back end of it, where the propeller is, we've got a cutlass bearing. So it's about sort of this diameter. It's about this long, probably, I don't know, 12 inches long, something like that. And it's bolted into the stern tube. So it's, it's part of the boat and the propeller spin, the shaft, the propeller shaft spins freely within that. Now we need to get a constant supply of grease down onto that white metal bearing. To do that, there's a pipe that runs from the back end of Brewpeg's engine room, which is actually located, the top of that is actually located underneath the holding tanks. So we've got a pipe that comes out, and then we'll go off to where we're going to actually do the lubrication from, and then the grease will just flow down that pipe, and then into the bearing. And at the front end of the propeller shaft, we've got what's called the stern gland. So the stern gland, on a, on a yacht or a smaller boat, where the propeller shaft is actually full of water, and you use the water to lubricate the propeller shaft, um, we don't have that. We have a grease-filled shaft, so we have to do our own lubrication with grease. Um, it's more common in commercial boats to have a grease-filled shaft. So at the front end of the prop shaft is the stern gland, which is basically flax packing. So it's, um, I think it's cotton with Teflon-infused cotton, and it's basically wrapped um, three times around the prop shaft, and then through a cone system, it's squeezed up tight. And what that does is it jams that Teflon uh, rope, that cotton Teflon-infused rope, it jams it up against the propeller shaft and it stops any of the grease coming out into the engine room or it stops, if it was a water-filled shaft, it would stop water coming into the engine room. Now you are supposed to have, in a water-filled shaft, you are supposed to have a small amount of water dripping in. So you can time it like, for argument's sake, it could be one drip every one minute or something along those lines. And that's actually providing lubrication for that bearing because if it's doing that, you know you're getting water all the way around that bearing. We don't have that. Because we're a grease-filled shaft, it's not going to leak water. It never will. Right now, the stern gland's not tight. We haven't packed that shaft full with grease. We haven't, haven't pumped it up with grease recently. Um, and we're in the water and we're not leaking. So we know full well that we're never going to see water coming in that shaft. And if we do, something bad has happened. So for us, we need to make sure that we're getting a constant stream of grease flowing in. And we have to do that. Um, like we either have to write it down when we've done that, do it every sort of 30 minutes when we're running, or it has to be an automated system. So we're going to be doing both. Initially, we won't have the funds to make this into an automated system, but we are going to turn our grease lubrication system for the boat into a fully automated system that's run by Brunet with the ability to do a manual override if we ever need it. However, having the automation on this means that we're actually going to have better maintenance overall. And the last piece of the puzzle is the rudder stock or the rudder shaft. So that's a pretty simple thing. It's got a bearing top and bottom. So one on the bottom of the boat or the bottom of the hull, just in, at the top end of the rudder and one right at the top of the rudder shaft, just below the rudder stock, which is the big piece of steel that goes across the top of the rudder shaft that the hydraulic rams connect to and push the rudder left to right. We've had a new shaft made and new bearings made for that rudder, so everything in there is, is essentially brand new. But we need, and they're self-lubricating, so we actually don't even need to put grease in these. They're a self-lubricating material. However, we're going to use grease in there regardless, just so that we get additional longevity and it's pretty easy for us to do as part of the system upgrade that we're doing. So the heart of the system is this manifold here, which has been donated by Daniel in the States. This is amazing. So this is what he does for a job. So this had a lot of um, background knowledge on how to set this up. The way that it works essentially is you've got inlet port up here. So grease or oil or whatever your lubrication is comes in the top, and then it gets fed into each one of these blocks and either spat out or bypassed. So We've got three blocks and we have five in total. So these two are bypasses, so they're just essentially blanked off. They're not gonna do anything. These two here are essentially like a proportioning valve. So you could think of it, so there's, so this here, MSP40S, and then we've got, over here we've got MSP30S, 20S, 10T, 10T. What that means, right? So 10, 20, 30, 40. So the, the 40 is gonna put out twice as much grease as the 20, 20 will put twice as much out as the 10, etc. So you can determine if you've got say three or four things to lubricate, you can give them different amounts of lubrication depending on the number that you use. The other side of it is the T and the S. So if we come back over to this guy here, up here we've, we've got S. So we've got lines coming out of one side only. So if we use say a 10 T, we could have a line coming out of this side and a line coming out over here and have two lines going off to something to be lubricated. So we don't need the twins at this stage, so the singles are all we need, but we have the ability later on if we ever want to, to add in the twins and we can take these out. So it's a bit like a Meccano set, you can kind of chop and change, you know, whatever you want in terms of size or twins or singles, um, etc. So it's pretty blooming cool. Now the thing that's quite neat about this, so you've got this little um, gauge thing here you can you might be able to see those little ball bearings and the little tracks there there's like i don't know probably eight ball bearings all the way around there what that does is that's a manual like a sight glass to tell you when you put grease in there 
these will move to tell you yes it's working so you can manually pump this and see like you've got a direct yes or no that you're actually getting grease out to your systems um, and then this one over here we have this um, cable which plugs into this and screws on I'm not going to do it it's too hard to do on with one hand but basically that plugs into that there and this is essentially a digital version of this so we're going to be wiring this into the brunette system and then once we've got an automated um, air pressure fed grease system that's coming in the top here we won't be having that initially we're just going to be having a manually fed system um, but when we can afford to upgrade we'll be putting an uh, air operated grease system up here so we have a five gallon drum of grease that will just get you know gently fed into this here brunette is going to be controlling when this gets lubricated and it'll also be having a, a like a countdown um, up on the dash so uh, when we're manually doing this we'll be able to know every 30 minutes for argument's sake we need to go down and give it a squirt and it will know that it's had its um, it'll see the pressure come through it'll know it's had its squirt of grease it'll reset the timer and off we go again once it's automated we won't have to physically do that it'll do it by itself three places we need to lubricate one's located at this end of the prop shaft this is the stern gland i mentioned next one is at the back end of the prop shaft go down here you can see that little fitting just in the corner there and then finally we've got the rudder stock and the rudder stock is that fitting just there the hardest part about this whole thing is figuring out where to put stuff i'm going to put the manual grease pump up here so we can just give it a couple of squirts every time we come in the engine room but i need to figure out where to put this proportioning valve somewhere down in this area i was thinking of tucking it just down on the engine bed down here but i'm not 100 percent certain if that's the best place for it essentially we're going to have the valve mounted somewhere and then we're going to have three lines running off to the various places that need to be greased and one line coming under the floorboards and up this pole here to the manual pump that's going to be over here i was hoping to avoid mounting the block in here but i think i'm going to mount it in here the reason being is because we need to put a floorboard over here but i also wanted to put an oil tank in this area as well so i was hoping to not have to have anything in there but i think i'll put it here and then i'll maybe move it later once we've got some more equipment in the boat it's only a matter of drilling four holes and moving it. it's not a big deal but I think that's going to be enough for now to get us on the road. Right, I need to bolt these four here, but because I don't have a pin that's going to get all the way down there, because that's quite deep, put that over, you've got a fair amount of distance to go down. What I'm going to do, I have a 7.5mm drill, which fits absolutely perfect down there. So I'm going to use that to transfer the centre of these holes across onto the bulkhead I need to drill. Okay, I'm going to mount it here. Um, so, it's the floorboard comes across here. Now, if I put a straight line between the two floorboard areas, you can see it clears it, however, this grease line is not going to clear it. So we're going to do a, a, a come out of here and do a 90, and then we're sort of going to tuck it down underneath the floorboard. So there will be a little bump up here, basically at the top of this for the floorboard. Now I'm going to swap these two over so that we can have the uh, indicator at the top and the, man and the switch at the bottom. The reason why I'm do that obviously is because then we can see the switch, and I'll probably have the cutout extend to cover all of that. So we'll be able to physically just look down and see if this is working. And it also keeps all of our pipe work under the floorboard so it's pretty hard to kick so yeah i think we'll put it there for now difficulty with working on a sunday the bolts that i have that are close are not close so i need to wait until tomorrow when the shop opens to get the right size bolts for this i reckon i need a six mil bolt can't do anything on this manifold now what i can do though is run the pipe work that goes into this corner from the various places down the back end of the boat. So these little push lock connections, they have this white band, that's actually thread sealant. So we can just screw that in without the need to actually put any thread sealant on. I need to make a slight adjustment to how much grease different parts of the boat are getting. And this shows you how simple it is by changing these blocks around on these Graco manifolds. I also need to change it from the outlets being all on the left hand side to one being on the right hand side, two being on the left and it's as simple as taking out a cap screw and putting in the right fitting to do that. Alright, I've just swapped everything around so we've got the um, manual sight glass up the top so we can see that it's working. I've changed it to have one outlet on this side and two outlets on this side and I've swapped these blocks over so we've got uh, 30 single, 40 single and then 20 single so we're going to do front prop shaft, rear prop shaft, rudder and that's why I've got single coming out this side, double coming out that side because it makes the pipe work a lot simpler. The pipe that we're using to link everything up is this hard plastic pipe. Now 
when you cut it, you want to have a nice symmetrical cut because you're basically pushing this into these push locks and if it's been crimped over or anything weird, you, you just end up having a pain and make your life really hard. So if you try and cut this stuff with side cutters, you can see that it does a terrible job of it. It's basically pinched over and it's awful out on the edges here. The other option is you got these sort of jaws, the kind of a curved jaw. They're slightly better, but they kind of mangle it a bit. They're a bit sort of, eh. The thing that I actually like using is the thing you use to cut copper brake lines and things like that. Um, it's slow, but it does a really good job. I'll just cut a little bit off and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. As I'm spinning it around, I'm tightening the little blade that's in there. Okay, you're left with a perfectly symmetrical cut and you don't have any like kinks or any weirdness in that sense and it'll push into those fittings really easily. So that's what the tool that I use just to make life a bit simpler. So I've got this sitting where it's going to sit. I'm just going to push this guy in. Okay, done. So now I need to route that. Yeah. Each time I spin it around, I give the little dial a wee twist just to tighten the tension on the blade up more. And it just cuts through nice and even. I'm not going to plug that in yet into the push lock because once they go in they're practically impossible to get out. I'm going to go through and P-clamp all of that right the way up here because then I'll probably cut this, cut a wee bit more off this and trim it to length. Magnet in a bottle so that I can pick up the swarf and then shake the magnet around in the bottle inside a rubbish bin and drop all the swarf really easily. A variation on the magnet in a bag trick. Thanks to Jeff Heaven for suggesting this in the comments, it was really handy. In case you're worried about chafage, these are stainless steel, so they won't rust. The rivets I'm using are stainless steel. And then this is a rubber um, like insert that sits in there, so the actual tubes themselves are held in a rubber insert. Apart from some missing bolts and the fitting at the top and the grease gun, this is now run. So we've got our grease line feeding the stern gland here. We've got the two lines coming up. There, there's clips underneath here, but we've got, you can sort of see P-clamps, stainless P-clamps with rubber. And then I need to do something down the back, but we've basically got that rudder stock as being lubed. And then right down here, this guy here, actually I need to plug that in. Okay, that one there is now you can sort of see a loop going around and into the fitting. So that's the back of the prop shaft done. Let's press on and get the grease gun fitted. A small selection of the tools needed to get to this stage. So we're bolted in and now we need to run the pipe work that goes from this manifold block up to the grease gun. Now the grease gun is capable of pumping grease through the system but it's also capable of pumping shit through the system. So we have this block and it's basically a grease filter. So essentially you've got this big cap on the end. You've got, uh, what have we got, an inlet on this side a filter in the center, and then an outlet on this side. A grease filter looks like this. So this is a spear that Daniel sent us. So all of this gear has come from Daniel. So this is a grease filter, and it's basically, uh, looks like um, aerated bronze or something along those, aerated copper, something like that. But essentially it's a, it's a very small micron filter, and it allows the grease to pump through. These last for years, so it allows the grease to pump through, and then you're getting clean grease out and down to your system. So um, pretty awesome little device. Fairly simple, fairly robust. This thing, to give you an idea of the pressures that this thing's capable of dealing with, it can only deal with a maximum of 7,500 PSI. One thing I really want to show you, this is a slide card 
sort of manual that Daniel gave us, thinking this was the first time I saw this was yesterday and I was thinking it was going to be like a laminated card. It sort of is, but what it actually is, is a working diagram of what the valves do. But you can pull these little slides, woo, and the pistons move. So it gives you an idea as to actually what happens whenever you pump grease, you're actually moving these pistons back and forth like so, and dispensing a certain amount of grease, and that's how they work. As a man, the first thing I do when I buy equipment is find the manual so that I can throw it out. But because this manual is written as if a toddler is going to be installing it and they've used pop-up book technology, I thoroughly read this manual. And manual writers of the world, I suggest you do this more often. It's okay though, I've got a secret cupboard of all the manuals he's been throwing over the years. So the grease system is just a standard grease gun. Got a pipe made up so that it comes into this filter block and then we've got the outlet of the filter block here which will go off to that manifold. So we need to mount this grease gun somehow. So mounting this grease pump, hydraulic clamps. They're basically a plastic two-piece clamp. They've got metal on the bottom. Normally they have metal on the top, but they didn't, ironically, they didn't have any of the metal bits that go on the top. Never mind, we're gonna make something work. So we've gone, Jess has actually gone, and got some cap screws, some long stainless cap screws. These are going to fit neatly down there. Now normally you wouldn't do it this way. Normally you put the metal plate across the top and then you bolt through that and, in, and screw it into the metal plate on the bottom so that you're like two bits of metal clamping this plastic together. But because we only have to physically hold the weight of a grease gun, this is going to be absolutely fine. So I'm going to screw these guys down like so. I'm going to use two of, two of these brackets like that. And there. And then these the metal part will get welded to the boat. Now, this is not ideal. I would have loved to have mounted this somehow on the metal part of the grease gun. However, I just don't know how I can do that. It's such a small, like it's so small. I don't know how I can do that without it being a problem. So I'm gonna be mounting it on the black part, which means every time we need to change grease in this gun, we need to undo these cap screws and put a new, and unscrew this black part and put a new grease, cap, grease cartridge in. So, not perfect, but it's okay, you know, to swap a grease cartridge out. You just undo four Allen keys, which is right next to where the Allen keys live, so it's not the end of the world. So that there gets welded onto the boat itself, and then you can one hand pump this. You don't actually have to hold it like an actual grease gun. So that's my plan to do the manual grease override system at the moment. Eventually, this will remain in the system, but eventually it will become redundant because we'll have our air system, which will be... Um, operated essentially the five gallon tank will be operated by a pressurized um, mechanism so the air tanks will pressurize the grease and it'll go through on a timed automatic system but for now this is going to be the start of our manual grease system remember that exhaust clamp thing that we made the other day well what you can do in situations like this is clamp the bottom one up and then this gives you the ability let me do this loose with the bottom one clamped this is centered, gives you the ability to have a real simple clamp arrangement here and need to join something to a beam or a pipe or something that's a bit awkward to clamp. Alright, so the filter block, I've made this little stainless bracket that allows us to bolt it like goes on the back like that, so this labels at the front. So we're gonna weld this bracket here onto that same pole, and then this pipe will basically go on the top of the thing, it'll do a loop and it'll bolt onto the bolt onto it in that sort of orientation. So let's get this welded. So you can see the pump's mounted. I'm not gonna pump it because it's full of grease, but the tube will come out of the top of there. The bracket sits about there, come out of the top, and then that filter housing will sit about, about there. Tube will then follow down through under the floorboards and off to that main manifold. But let's get this welded in and we'll start putting the system together. pipe's kind of the easy one. This morning I went into the hydraulic shop and I asked for two pipes, 400 millimeters and 2.4 meters. Um, 
Turns out that would have been too long for this pipe. However, I don't know what he's made it to yet, but it's way, way too short. It's, I think, maybe 1.4 metres. Uh, anyway, this is way too short to be able to use long term, but what I can do is just pipe it straight into the manifold and we can actually start making the system work. So we can move the boat, but I have to leave this floorboard out and I need to get a new pipe made. So that's going to be tomorrow's job after we move the boat. What I can show you is priming the system. So undo that line and with nothing attached to this end, we'll just start pumping the gun and get the grease out of here. Plug it onto there. Once that's done, we'll start pushing the grease through this line here and get it out the end of that one. And then we plug it into here. We can start getting it out of these fittings and so on and so on. We just work our way all the way through until we've got grease coming out every single line and then we can start pushing it into the actual shafts themselves. All right, time to prime this. You'll be surprised how many people start priming their grease systems and forget to put grease in the gun. Yeah. When I'm priming a system, I just use an empty bottle to capture the grease from the end of the pipe. Cool, done. Right, you can go in there. number of pumps to get it from one end to the other. Remembering that this is temporary until we get the right length pipe made. Right, let's loosen these guys off. Three hoses disconnected, one there, one there, one there. I'm going to feed grease in this line here and it should start to come out the three different ports. Might be a wee bit hard to see and you might also see this starting to move. Started pumping we had a little overpressure event going on, so clearly something's not working. So we've got grease down to here flowing well, but we just something was going on with this manifold, and I just had a conversation with Daniel. What we figured out is one of these blocks, the piston inside was jammed. So a little bit of rubbish crud had got down in there, so I've swapped the third block out, which is the one, and we're ready to start pumping, and we should see grease come out of these ports. So pump at the ready. Here we go. Here we go. One at the top two. Okay. Yep, going out this side as well. Let's clean that up with a rag. So this is all coming out of the other side, which is a great sign. That one's working. We've just got one more to get coming out. Might put them in there because we know that's working now. We can put those away, put those to bed. You might notice I've removed the switch from here and the little uh, magnetic thing, the little indicator port, just to make it easy while I'm priming everything. I'll put them back in later. Okay, click, click. Put this guy in. Okay, click, click. Right, I'm going to keep pumping. We should see grease come out that last port there. Got it. There it is. Look at that. Beautiful. Smashing. Let's clear that out of there. Okay. Right. So now we can make sure we're getting grease down at these areas. There we go. Okay, let's make sure we're getting grease out of here. Pretty sure the answer is going to be yes, we are. All right. So watch these little ball bearings here. There's a piston that moves back and forth inside this block, and there's a rod, magnetic rod, that goes back and forth inside this here. So the magnet essentially moves these ball bearings back and forth if that piston moves. 
And the only way the piston can move is if the grease has successfully gone through the system. So I'll pump it and show you how that works. And grease is in the system, and then pressure coming down. At the other end, we know it's working because I've got a small smearing of grease around here. So we know that we've got grease working away into our shaft now. The chaos of working, but the system is ready to go. So we can pump our grease like so through here through a filter 25 micron filter through a line that's too short that needs to be replaced tomorrow and then over to our manifold block which has a little indicator valve to show that we're actually getting grease the electric switch which we need to obviously wire up but that will tell us digitally that we're getting grease and then it has the different blocks that determine how much grease each thing's getting and then we know that they're working because we can see the grease coming out so that's been a success the boat's ready to move as always we're brushing uh, we're about to move. The person in the trawler's just arrived. It's high tide and they need to get in now if they're going to do it today. With the ropes now loose, Jess was able to push the throttle forward and we were able to free ourselves from the dock once more. pressure is probably going to climb. I'm going to lift the revs, the speed will come up, but oil pressure, the engine oil and the coolant temp should all come up. What I'm hoping to see is some boost. Oh, PSI, here we go, boost over the side. So we've got two PSI running right now. We weren't planning to have a lot of time out on the water. We've still got a lot of work to do and there's no point in wasting time. While we're free of the dock though, we wanted to do a little bit more testing on the engine monitoring system because we've never been able to load the engine up properly. So we started progressively increasing the throttle as you can see here, coming up to the highest speed that we've had the boat running so far, which is just under nine knots at, call it 1300 RPM, 1250, 1300 RPM, something like that. A real comfortable, easy cruising speed. This engine can go up to 1800 revs. So we've still got plenty of capacity left in this motor. I think we're probably gonna get close to nine and a half, ten 10 knots as an easy speed on this boat. The main reason we were moving brew peg today was to go from the work berth to a regular marina berth. This marina berth just in front of us here that you'll see us pull into in a minute. This is real time and it gives you a, quite a good idea as to how manoeuvrable brew peg is when you're just going slow, you're going forward and you start using the thrust of that big propeller to spin the back end of the boat left and right. So I'll talk you through the different manoeuvres that we did to make sure the boat fit into that tight little spot. So we don't need a lot of power at the moment, we've just got the boat in gear and forward gear and we've just got her in idle and we're just cruising forward. The tide is running out so it's moving from the right of the screen to the left of the screen. So we're using that to our advantage because we're going to be driving up tide. So we've taken it out of gear, you can hear the change in the motor. I've just put the boat back into forward, you might hear the change in the engine now. Rudder's going hard to starboard or the right hand side now, back into neutral start to see that bow come round to the right hand side. Put it back in gear just to give her a little bit more forward thrust and then out of gear. So we're just idling in. I have to cut this corner really tight because I don't want to get anywhere near that other boat. And then back in gear so that we can go straight forward. There we go, we're in gear now. Now 
coming out here I want to stop it so we're putting it in reverse and you can see the boat comes to a complete stop a bow thruster would certainly make this easier but it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do this with a boat of this size and with this type of prop and then when we're in there and tied up she sits beautifully